I'm going to try to explain how I'm going to build this liner puller tool with this plan that I have here drawn out on paper. This one here uh, represents the liner. This represents the bottom of the block where the bottom of the cylinder is actually even with the bottom of the casting. You can see the machined area of the cylinder from underneath. It's too cold. I can't do any of this outside because it's only 8 degrees out there right now. So, but it's supposed to warm up in a couple days, a little bit. This offset right here in the drawing represents the outside of the cylinder. This goes into an offset cut out in the top of the cylinder block. This is the cylinder, the part where the piston rides up and down. That, I said to explain why this piece over here, I'm going to cut out some pieces. And I've already got that drawn out on the metal that's going to be cut out. This little area here, this little corner here, and this one here, this goes inside here. You flip these things up sideways, and you drop it down in from the top, push it far enough down in that they fall back to their natural position again, which is like this. There's two of these. This is a side view of the same thing. This is one of, the, of these, and here's the other one, and a bolt going right through the middle, and a piece of square tubing coming down that goes through that bolt keeps these separated that far apart so there's two of these that are going to go they're going to be hooked into the bottom of the cylinder the cylinder is going to be right here and right here the cylinder walls these are bigger than the bottom they're going to be on the bottom on the outside of it that's what's going to hook on the bottom and pull it out this is going to be like a t-handle this is the side view of that t-handle of that same square tubing with a nut right through the middle of it and a hole and so the threaded rod goes through that and into that nut and this is just some kind of a bridge that I'll make and stick on top I'm not going to weld this thing together I'll just take a piece of metal with a hole in it heavy gauge metal and I'll just put two even sized spacers on either side they could wind up being pieces of two by four I don't know what I'm going to use for spacers I don't care it's just something to hold this thing above the top of the cylinder block so we can pull the cylinder out far enough to clear the the o-rings that have to come out of there and so this is this represents a nut that's on top that's going to just wind down just drop it down in there pull it up into place turn the nut down by hand put a wrench on it crank it out that's my plan now I'm going to show what I have on the metal drawn out here we are on the metal. These pieces right here represent this right here. We'll cut the shoulder off like that. We'll just do a rough cut, slightly bigger than what I need. We'll clean it up with the grinder. Uh, these are going to be the bolt holes that go right through the piece of square tubing. So those are my two pieces uh, already measured out and drawn out. And I need to stay slightly to this side of this line because I gave myself an extra sixteenth of an inch for the cut. I need to stay on on this side of this line when I cut it that way everything will come out just right over here on this side and hopefully I won't cut anything too small where I have to weld it up and then machine it down I wish I had one of those cylinders that's going to go in but they're not arrived yet they're on order and it's too cold to go outside and check these parts in the block I'm gonna make them tonight and maybe tomorrow it's it's nighttime now and this right here is the broken piston that came out and I just got a ring compressor around it and so that'll simulate the size of the cylinder it'll be slightly snug it'll be about oh sixteenth of an inch wider than what this is across here if it just barely does fit in here I want it to be slightly loose anyway I don't want it to be too tight we can always shim out the outsides with washers a little bit on either side of of this piece of, of square tubing it's going to be down in the middle so that's the plan for that here's the square tubing and the nut here's the threaded rod here's an extra nut it just does fit in there that's a nice snug fit some more scrap metal that I picked up on my job uh, it's pretty thick stuff about three-eighths of an inch then we're gonna use this chop saw down here to to cut a couple pieces off of this. Cut my pieces out and made them both four inches long. 
This piece will, this nut will go inside. You have to clean the burrs off of it first. Push it in there far enough to find the hole once the hole is in there and then thread your rod into it. I'm holding it together with a C-clamp. I found the squarest end since I just cut it off with a, a cheap chop saw. I just I found the squarest end that was cut and I fastened that against the bottom of the T and as you can see I'm just going to hold it together with a C clamp so I'm going to weld it up. It's not a welding video so I'm not going to show my welding. I'm just going to weld it up. There's my piece, my little T handle. It's welded up. I've been debating on whether or not I was going to use a torch or plasma. It's 3 8 thick or even slightly less than that. It's like a heavy 5 16 it looks like. My plasma should cut that without any problem. It's supposed to do three quarters, which would be a sloppy job and take forever. A uh, half inch, I have cut that before, but it is slow. So it should do a nice job cutting this. I am going to add this little tidbit about welding. I say it on most of my welding videos is that whenever you got rusty metal, it's always a good idea to put a vice grip on it, twist it a couple times, break through the rust, and hang your ground clamp on your vice grip like I did here. That's what I'm gonna do. It helps protect the inside guts of my plasma cutter, which is down there. It doesn't always sit there, but that's where I put it right now for this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out and be back on the next piece. Here's my two pieces. Got them cut out and ground down, polished up a little bit beveled one side of each one of them. That's the side it's going to be against the cylinder. They'll go in like this with the bevels like that and then that bar in between them. Here they go. If they come up a little bit small, it's okay. We'll just shim them out a little bit like this in between the bolts. In between the bolt that goes through like that. We'll just shim them out with some washers. Had to drill a hole through the top of this T and right through the center of the bottom part um, so that the threaded rod would go through it. And I did it, of course, here on the drill press with a three-quarter hole saw. Then I took a big file like this, cleaned out the hole a little bit so I don't cut my fingers. If I stick them in there, this thing goes right on through there now. The nut fits in there. Good. Now I still got to drill the holes on these. I'm going to use a different size hole. This one here I wanted three quarter inch hole because that's a three quarter threaded rod. I'm going to have it decided yet, but I believe I'm going to go with a half inch bolt on this. Going through that and through this. First I started out with a center punch mark there to uh, center the drill bit. Like it's on this one and then I went on and drilled a smaller pilot hole that is probably around a quarter inch or so and this is my first time using these drill bits these are cobalt drill bits from harbor freight they're high dollar even at harbor freight now that i got that hole drilled i'm going to change the drill bit put this half inch drill in there and do the second hole went right through it just like hot butter so I have to give a thumbs up on these drill bits. Of course, it's my first time using them. Uh, don't know how long they're going to last before they got to be sharpened. I did some research online and cobalt bits seem to keep coming up as the better way to go with uh, your home shop. Well, here's a plug for my new uh, cobalt drill bits from Harbor Freight. Let's see if we can get a close up on that. Looks like we're getting a reflection. And cover it. There we go. And let's see if we can get a close up on the drills after using them. Looks sharp to me. I didn't use a pilot hole on the 
other piece that's only an eighth of an inch thick. I think we did okay on, on that. I think I paid 70 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, for this set. Here's the one I used for the pilot hole. It's still pretty sharp. Of course, I only used it once, but this thing went through like 3 eighths thick twice, so 3 quarters of solid steel. And I, I kept spraying WD-40 on it to keep them cool because that is important that you keep the drill bits cool while they're cutting. Got it all assembled here. I put four washers on each side. I don't know how many I'm going to need until it gets the cylinders here. Or until it gets above freezing out there, I can go out and drop it down in a cylinder and see. Got a stack of washers here, so if I need more to spread it out a little bit, make it tighter fit, I can do that. The only thing I haven't done was on the top, I just need to get a bar, another bar of steel, put a hole in it that this will go through, and, uh, and just block that up on either side of the cylinder on top of two blocks of some kind that are the same size, and that's just to hold it on top. What I'm going to do is just raise these things up like that, drop it down in the cylinder till they fall out the bottom, and then pull it back up and start tightening it down. I just got to find out how far out I got to space these out so that it'll fit tight. I'm trying to get this cylinder out. This is uh, the second cylinder back. The first one, the crankshaft's in the way. The second one was right there handy. And so I got my new tool in there and I cut out these big chunks of metal here to use for a bridge because what I did at first, trying to cheat, was use a couple of 2x4s and this chunk of 3 8 metal it's a remains of a piece of angle iron and as you can see there it's just bending and collapsing and it was just crushing the wood there's the block side left that impression on there so i had to go back in the shop and make these and now i got it almost as tight as i can get it with a wrench i'm getting ready to double wrench it and try to crank on it some more i'm not sure what it's going to take to get these out it might just be too cold maybe with that this cold weather, the uh, maybe those O-ring seals around the bottom are just froze. Maybe I got to put a salamander under it and heat this thing up. I don't know. We'll find out. I can't do it with the camera on there. Here I am underneath, trying to get a picture of my jig that I made. There it is on the bottom. Let me see if I can get a flashlight on that. Okay, there's the flashlight. There's the, the hooked end of those two wedges that go, or whatever you want to call them, underneath there. There's one underneath the edge of the cylinder down there, and of course the other side's over there. And there's not a lot of access to get this on camera crankshafts in the way there we have it that's the bottom side looking up here's the top side looks like we're starting to pull it up out of there a little bit but it's it's very slow moving I have a strong suspicion it might be the cold maybe I'm not supposed to do this in the cold it's only about I don't know 30 35 out here today and started out cold it started out in the teens this morning so or mid 20s i think it was low to mid 20s so the truck's going to be cold all day i think that might be part of my trouble we're making progress it's coming out but i'm still double wrenching it's still pretty tight but while i was under there a while ago my hood closed on me with the wind out here i had to tie a brick to the front of it to help hold it down I got it broke it loose
it's my first time ever doing that bring it inside and take it apart where it's warm still got the puller tool in there I'll get it out here in a little bit I see one of the troubles I had was this upper seal keeps the antifreeze from getting down below this ring here is all mushroomed up here on the top so that was really fighting with me it scissored off here and since it's well about five and a half inches times three you know times pi to the, the circumference is is quite a bit it's going to be you know about 16 17 inches around so uh that's that's a lot of area a lot of contact area that this is jammed up against plus one seal here plus another seal here so yeah it was it was tight and i think if it was hot it might have made a difference i don't know never did it before I'll go ahead and take it all the rest of the way apart start cleaning it up i see i'm going to have rust to deal with in those uh areas that this liner has to go to i do have a little bit of a problem my hole in this piece here got stretched in this t that's only eighth inch thick material and it got stretched downwards you can see it's kind of oblong and the, the bolt that goes in there it's got a lot more up and down play than it had before the bottom's starting to point outwards since I had three washers on each side of this between these plates that brings it out to almost a quarter inch bigger on each side I'm gonna find some stock um, I don't really want to quite go to a quarter inch I'll try to find something a little thinner just another eighth inch would be probably more than enough but I'll I'm gonna make a, uh, a shim and weld it on here